Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com If you enjoyed or learned something about baking normal maps or baking in general from the video consider liking and consider subscribing to our channel for more Blender, Unity 3D coding and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly don't forget our motto create your way. So I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video. I've been very very busy working on my submarine game. Um, I've switched from Unity to Unreal Engine 4 which has warranted me having to learn not only the engine but C++ uh, programming language so I've been extremely extremely busy I, uh, I haven't opened Blender in two weeks but I thought um you guys, um, I've left you basically hanging for the last two weeks. I should probably uh, throw something up that's somewhat useful to show you guys that I'm still alive. So today I want to show you how to how to take a high poly object and bake it onto a low poly object in Blender using cycles. Um, now it's usually better to generate your own normal maps um, using stuff software like uh, NDO2 or even using just some sort of plugin for Photoshop or something but it it can it can easily be done in Blender um, if you take your time and do it properly and uh, basically you're just careful and do some practice but I'm just gonna show you the basics this is gonna be normal map baking 101 and maybe even 100 or 99 it's gonna be the basics so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cube here and we're gonna call it cube underscore low for low poly now we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna scale it slightly bigger and we're gonna ca just call this cage and we are going to hide it we don't need to see it um, you'll see this cage option right here uh, it might not the tooltip cast raise to active object from a cage might not make any sense it's a, it's a new addition well not a new addition it's been around for quite a while but it's a cycles feature that uh, can make generating or baking normal maps that have sharp edges a lot smoother and end up working better and you'll have to do less post processing and uh, fixing in a image editing program afterwards so that's one thing I do suggest you do, but you don't have to do that. Anyways, now we're going to duplicate our cube uh, low object, so Shift D, and we want it in the exact same position. Now we are going to simply rename that duplicated object to cube high. So we're going to have our low and high poly object. Now, cube low let's add a simple material to it so I'm just gonna split my window as I usually would into the node editor sorry if I'm a little rusty it's like I said I haven't opened blender in nearly two weeks and we are going to create a new material for it so I'm gonna get rid of this one and make a new material I'm just gonna call this uh, low poly and we're just gonna give it well, we're going to leave the basic diffuse um, shader, but we're going to add in a image texture. This is going to be our normal map. And then we're going to add in vector normal map. That way Blender knows what to do with the normal map data. We're going to connect color to color. And we're going to connect normal to normal. Now we're just going to leave that alone for now. On cube high, so our high poly object, we're just gonna make sure it has just a basic texture, just a regular diffuse texture. We don't want anything fancy on it. So next, what we wanna do is we want to unwrap our low poly object. So I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna split my window and go into the UV slash image editor. And I am going to simply take our low poly object I can actually hide the high poly one for right now or you can do it on different layers whatever your your preference is but I'm gonna hide the high poly object and using our low poly object I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to unwrap it now you could select all the edges and mark the seams as you normally would but that's outside the scope of this tutorial for speed I'm just going to do a smart UV project of 89 degrees because I know that that works perfect for cubes and leaves us with this result every single time 
So our low poly cube is unwrapped. Next, we need to create an image to put our normal map on we need to save our normal map to somewhere so I'm gonna create a new image so I'm gonna go image new image in the UV slash image editor and I'm just gonna call this say normal map and it can be any size 124 is perfectly squared is a perfectly fine size to practice with um, the color doesn't really matter the generated type doesn't really matter you can do whatever you want so just hit ok to generate your your new black image or whatever else you choose now we're gonna go back into the node editor and we're quickly just gonna set this up so our normal map we want to use that image so we're going to choose normal map from our list of images that we can use now currently this will do absolutely nothing and we want to choose UV map under the normal map settings however when you're doing simple things like this that doesn't make a difference but from here on out it's that should be all you need to do in terms of the node editor so I'm gonna go back to the UV slash image editor just so we can see what's happening I'm gonna tab out of edit mode into object mode I'm gonna hide the low poly cube and I'm gonna unhide the high poly cube so now we're working with the high poly cube you'll see I have cube underscore high selected so I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm just gonna randomly add some details I'm gonna say select every face I'm gonna press I to uh, to inset and I'm just gonna randomly inset some faces I'm gonna create the illusion of depth on every face so I'm gonna do this to every face I to inset and control to add some depth So of course what you might do this what you might do with this is you might take your high poly object first so let's say you've created a um, I don't know let's say you've created a super realistic gun for a first person shooter game but let's say it has a hundred thousand tries polys and you want to turn it down to like 10,000 polys so you might take your high poly model first remove all the details you can and then sorry duplicate it and then remove all the details you can and then bake the high poly details onto the low poly mesh so that's essentially what we're, what we're doing here we're just doing the process in reverse we're adding details to a low poly mesh so now what we want to do is we want to go to our render tab and the only th thing we're going to use is the bake th the bake uh the bake tab under the render settings tab and so the reason I've made this video is because I think people don't understand what baking means baking is just the process of taking data and um, writing it to an object I guess is a way to put it for example when we add a modifier let's say I added a screw modifier and I hit apply I have now baked that modifier onto my mesh so that's that's just one way to think of it um, that's that's my best way to explain it so anyways what we wanted what we're gonna do is we're going to we want selected to active and since we're using a cage we want cage now that's gonna bring up an object box we want to select our cage now our cage has to be bigger than than our high poly object for it to work um, but like I said you don't need to use the cage for something as simple as this but it definitely can help the margin as well um, the lower it goes the or the lower of a margin you use the sharper it will be but the more artifacting you'll get and the more post-processing you'll have to do in something like Photoshop anyways so select it to active so bake shading on the surface of selected objects to the active object means that we have to select our high poly first and then our low poly again it doesn't matter if they're hidden I'll turn them both on for right now so we want to again we want to choose our high poly first and then hold down shift and click on your low poly so that your low poly is active but the high or 
you, the high poly is selected and the low poly is active. So selected to active, selected to active. So we're baking the selected cube high poly details onto the active selected cube low object. So under bake type, the last thing we need to do is choose normal and the stock settings are fine for something simple like this. And all we have to do is hit bake and we should, after a few seconds, have some sort of a normal map come up. So as you can see, the UVs that we, uh, the UV unwrapping that we did on the low poly cube has this normal map um, generated over those areas. So what is the effect? Well, let's delete the high poly cube completely. So we just have the low poly cube. So remember that we already set it up on the node editor. If, if you miss that step, I will quickly show you again the details since I like to be detailed. Um, so all we're doing here is we're taking that image we just generated, so the normal map blank image that we first created, which we then baked the normal on to. We're putting that, we're using that as an image texture, and then we're plugging that into a normal map node so that Blender knows what to do with all the weird colors that it gets. And then we're plugging the normals from that into the normal of our diffuse shader, which finally goes into our material output. So now if we go into rendered mode, we should get the rough details of our high poly object as you can see it doesn't work a hundred percent in all instances but you can see for example on this face on this face it worked fine it, it appears that we have those few f details in there but we're still we still only have um 12 tries in this in this cube but it looks like we have a lot more you know this would be two right here two four six eight so it looks like we have um 20 tries when really we only have 12. now you can see this side kind of work too so you can see that there's definitely room for improvement there's some artifacting on this side it didn't work 100 percent this isn't the perfect way to do the process it's just kind of an intro to what is baking and how you can bake normal maps you do have to do some playing around you'll see if i go into the uv slash image editor and open up our normal map image it um it's not a hundred percent perfect i don't know if you've ever seen a proper normal map but this isn't a hundred percent perfect obviously there's there's a few things you can do to try to change that you can change the margin down to something like two pixels we can maybe try getting rid of the cage we could try baking that and see what the difference is so, oh, I deleted the high poly object. But anyways, you get you get the basic ideas behind this. So that is the one-on-ones of baking normals from a high poly object into a low poly object. Again, this is an extremely simplified uh, way of going about it. Not necessarily the best way or most proper way, but it is it is the fundamentals behind it. So hopefully this uh, cleared some things up for some of you guys who don't know what baking is and how to generate normals from high poly models if you're uh, if you're trying to learn how to do things such as game assets. Anyways. Thanks again for watching another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something about baking, consider liking it and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos. We're on Twitter at twitter.com slash blendertech and Facebook at facebook.com slash blendertech page, all one word. Also at our website, blendertech.com slash blog, we have some models, Unity assets, textures, code, and all sorts of other things to download for free use. If you dislike this video for any reason,
instead of just leaving with a thumbs down, please tell us what you did not like either in a comment or email us at infoblendertech.com so that we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests and call for help so if you're having issues with something or want to see something just let us know. So we'll see you guys next time when I actually have some time and remember create your way.